We hey guys, live. welcome, uh, free, Matt Beck, FreeSalonEducation.com, and we are live, yes, we are live on Facebook. Oh, we're live? Do I, I no, feel just like, kidding, just kidding. <laughs> I feel like we are um, on some TV show where they're pointing at every camera. All right, so we're live on Facebook Live with American Salon Magazine. I got Jenny Streeby. I got that right? Yep, you got it right. And she's the Confessions of a Hairstylist. You guys know who she is on Instagram, YouTube, books. You're like the king of all media at this point. Kind of not, but so, thank you. All right, so talk to me about, um, so we're going to we're gonna take some questions if you're watching live on Facebook, and we will answer a couple of those questions at the end. Okay, So cool. I know Pete is watching and paying attention to those questions, so we will have those for you at the end. All right, so I want to get started. Let's talk about how long you've been a hairstylist, so I can get a judge for that. He just, you really just want to know how old I am, huh? No. <laughs> That's the first question you do not ask. <laughs> this is true. This is true. All right. So how long you been a hairstylist? Oh my gosh. 16 years. 16 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and you have been educating for how long? Eight years. Eight years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're based out of where? Scottsdale, Arizona. And have you been there your entire career? My whole entire career. I'm really? actually not from there. I'm from Walla Walla, Washington. Um, okay. Small town girl. But uh, yeah, I've lived in Arizona my whole hairdressing career. Okay. And you have a family? Yep. I have a family. And you, uh, so we're going to get into that, that travel bit that you did. Yeah. So talk to me about the beginning of where you decided to, what was the first social platform? Because we're going to talk about social media quite a bit because it's something that you and I are both on quite a bit. Um, so you, when you got started in social media, what was your first platform that you started working with it actually was a blog a i blog. launched a blog mm -hmm. okay and uh it was four years ago and i was just really bored it was when um i had my first child okay and i was not a stay-at-home mom but working about 20 hours inside the salon and i was bored and i wanted to like do fun things with my hair so i decided to do a 30-day hair challenge and did like little tutorials and launched my blog that way okay so your 30-day challenge was doing different hairstyles to every my day. own hair every day. Okay. And then I would do um, like a little how-to essentially and what products I used and whatnot. And then after people were actually really intrigued with what I was doing, the numbers kind of got addicting. I'm like, oh, 10 people saw it today. Oh, right. 50 today. Like, And it just became kind of a new passion. And I think because I had been an educator for so long and then after I had my daughter, I kind of really miss that kind of connecting with um, audiences and educating. So okay. it was a newfound love. All right, cool. So and then so the blog is very visual. So you weren't doing video at that point. Nope, it was not just at that point. picture. Were you taking pictures and showing the steps? Yes. Okay. And I was using my MacBook Pro with the, I think, what's the photo app? The photo booth, I think. Yeah. And I was just like, wait. Oh, you were shooting on photo booth? <laughs> yeah. I was waiting until it counted down. Five, four, three, two. <laughs> and that's all I did. This like, is what people don't understand. Like, you don't need and you don't need equipment like this. Like, I, I shot my first YouTube video on an iPad. You're using Photo Booth. Like, you don't need to start with fancy stuff. Yeah. That's not what it's about. Okay, so so you're on Photo Booth. You're taking the pictures. You do the 30-day thing. Do you think the 30-day thing was the, a big jump start for you? Like, do you think that's because you were doing it every day? that helped you along? Oh, or? absolutely. And I think it just helped me in general. Like, this is really fun. Like, this is cool. People are liking it. Like, people were coming back for more. So I definitely think that was the jump off. Like, people would come back. And then with that, you know, it's so funny, Matt, um, is I started, like, realizing blogging was a thing. Like, I had no idea. Right. Like, that was, like, the, the peak of, like, the blogging world, fashion bloggers. Yeah, because so four I, years ago, it would have been, yeah, like, that was the thing to do yeah. four years ago. But I contacted, like, random hair, um, like, I can think of latesthairstyles.com. And uh, I just was like, hey, I'm a hair blogger, and I do step-by-step -step tutorials. Do you want me to be a contributor for you? And I had only been hair blogging for two weeks. <laughs> right. And did they say yes? Yeah, they of said course. yes. Yeah, because yeah. everyone's looking for content. Yeah. So let's talk about, so you're producing the content, you have the blog, then what did you do from there? Um, from there, I just felt like different opportunities came about. So after working with latesthairstyles.com, like a lot of my um, tutorials went viral on Pinterest and then it shot, it gave me a lot of um, 
uh, followings and views on my blog. So after that, I was like, wait, I can do more. And then after looking into the whole world of, of what was happening with social media, um, I was like, oh, I should do a YouTube. Other people are doing it too. And, right. and I launched a YouTube. Okay. And so when you launched your YouTube, did you, did you see a big reaction to what you were doing? Because you're, you're focused on hairstyling for the most part, right? Yes. So, and hairstyling is something that there are a, quite a bit of people out there doing styling, but not, yeah. but the ones that are doing it are pretty successful with it because it's something unique, I think, to our, most people don't pick up hairstyling and say, this is my dream thing, yeah. right? I mean, I, I've never, just styling hair in the salon is like a, a big challenge for me, right? So like, I don't braid hair, I don't know how to do any of that. So tell me like, w as you're moving through, um, YouTube, you started doing the step-by-step -step styling videos. Is that what mm -hmm. it was? Yep. And didn't you have color in there as well? Um, I did a couple, but it's but it was never mostly been styling? like a main focus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did you, do you feel, so now you, you started building your audience on the blog that was consumer and hairdresser? Yeah. Well, at first, like I felt like it was very consumer with, with it going viral on Pinterest, you know, because right. a lot of consumers on Pinterest. But then I started getting emails and questions from hairstylists like, oh, I'm this hairstylist from such and such place. And I have a question. And, and then I quickly realized, wow, I'm, I'm educating the consumer and the hairstylist. Right. I had no idea. I, it was like very consumer focused at first. OK, cool. So when did you move into Instagram? Because I think that, that was probably a big turning point for you. Yeah, oh my right? gosh, absolutely for all of my networks. Um Instagram I've been doing for about 3 years. Like okay. and and I love saying that because people are shocked like things did not happen overnight. Like right. I definitely was um one of I don't want to say one of the first hair sets, but I got in on it a little bit earlier than than yeah. people nowadays. Nowadays like it's so long. Um it is long though. Like yeah. 3 years is a long time. Yeah, it's yeah. a long time, but I have a big following, but it's taken so long to to get that big following. Nothing happens overnight. Right. But um, with that, you know, I felt like it was a great place to create a platform to show my pictures, get people over to my blog or my YouTube right. or whatnot. So that's really how things kind of taking off a little bit more in, okay. a, in a different direction. And what would you say, so if you could name like three secrets to social media, what would it be for, for your Instagram or your blogging or whatever it is I'm sure they're very similar. Yeah. But what do you think makes you stand out? Hmm, that's a good question. I mean, I feel like I got in at, at a right time, and I know that's probably young stylists don't want to hear that because it was during the braid movement. And right. um, I know I helped along that process because um, I am very braid focused. So, um, you know, I feel like three things I could give like a, a beginner, a newbie, is that what you're asking? Like right. how, would be um, really to find your niche or your passion. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like you can't just put a bunch of good pictures on Instagram like and just hope that they like go viral or people repost. You gotta do it with intention. Yeah. Um, you know, like I'm, I want to be an edu well, I am an educator, but my focus was always to get my education out there, to get my, with my YouTubes and stuff, was always to like show my style of teaching. Right. So with that, with Instagram, I kind of like, okay, I did the braided bun, check it out on YouTube and on the blog. So I kind of like cross promoted all around. But um, if someone wanted to like start an, an Instagram account, they got to figure out their intention for it. Like, do they want clients? Yeah. Do they want to be um, a color educator or, or bridal hair specialist? And kind of after that, figure it out from there. Right. Um, in the sense of, you know, if you want to be bridal focused, then the next step would do be is do a bunch of bridal work. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, good quality uh, pictures is always a must um, and be consistent. So the second would be really figure out your niche and come out with really great content. Um, you know, just don't put a picture on Instagram to have content. You definitely have to do good, solid quality work. Right. Um, and I guess the third tip would be um, good quality work, consistency, you know, have a good, solid identity. I feel it's harder than ever right now to make a, a voice for yourself on yeah. social media. You got to stand out. And I feel 
um, with that is uh, something that's been really key to my success because I don't think a lot of people knew this, but my YouTube, it took so dang long for it to even like start growing. And the reason right. for it is because I wasn't doing styles that were trending today. I was doing styles that made me happy. Right. And so the funny thing about that, it's turned around where people are looking for me for inspiration. Um, so I never was, I was always true to like my identity and, and kind of standing out in that regards. Like I wasn't doing what Joe Schmo was doing next to me, you know? So, yeah. um, that was a lot of that was good. That was good. <laughs> and I think the point of it is like, it's not looking at students now and saying, all right, well, you're jumping on too late to Instagram. You've jumped on too late to the photo is going to make you like stand out on Instagram. Like a photo, yeah. there's so many beautiful photos. Like what yes. I found is I got onto, Inst I was a YouTube person, got onto Instagram way too late. And I was trying to post photos and I was reposting some people and like trying to grow on Instagram and it was slowly happening, but nothing was really happening. And then I started creating 15 second education haircut videos and I was putting those out every day and then Instagram switched to one minute. So now I've taken over that. So I hit the platform when it hit video. Mm -hmm. So now my Instagram grew 25,000 followers in the last two months because of it's the new way of using Instagram. Yes. Right? So I think a lot of people out there need to realize that like Snapchat right now, like no one's really jumped on that yet to in a hair sense. Yes. Right? So there's like different. Let's do that, Matt. Right. So there's different platforms out yeah. there. You got on Instagram at the perfect time. That doesn't mean that everybody else can do that. Absolutely. Right. And I just want to add really quick um, is that I feel like and maybe you agree that with Instagram, you have to be a little street smart. And I don't mean like smart on the streets, but you got to be aware of what's happening. Like you right. said, the 15 second videos were working out, then the one minute videos, and you've really honed into that. Like you have to pay attention. And right. unfortunately, it's a lot of work. Like we have to pay attention to what's happening on Snapchat. Like we yeah. have to pay attention and, and a lot of trial and error, you know? Yeah. Um, it's like the social world is so different because a lot of stylists, like I, I've been in the education part for 10 years now. And like what it used to be, you go to a hair show to, to hopefully inspire 50 people. Now it's just a whole, it's a bigger thing. Yeah. Like now you're inspiring thousands of people Which is wild. daily and it is wild. So it's pretty cool. And I think if anybody wants to get involved in that, you definitely just have to look for what is trending, what's happening. Yep. We're on Facebook live right now. I mean, that's something that people aren't, really attacking at this point. Yeah, exactly. So live video is something that people can do. So, all right, we got through that. You said you have a book. Yeah, I have three books actually. What are in these books? My li the stories of my life. The stories no, of your no, life? No, no, oh, no, I'm just like, kidding. Really? My life is not that cool, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I had some real confessions. Um, so I have hair tutorial books. Okay. So going back to like when I started, I was very consumer like oriented um, or focused. Um, a publisher in the UK picked me up. Okay. And uh, my first book is called A Hundred Perfect Hair Days. Um, in the UK and Australia, it's uh, called A Hundred Awesome Hair Days. But um, it's just hundred awesome tutorials. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's and so cool. the second one is braids, buns, and ponies for little girls. Okay. It's a little girl tutorial book for perfect for moms that are on the go and need um, quick uh, tips or whatnot and ideas to style their children's hair. And the third one is um, five minute hairstyles. Okay. So again, they're all very consumer um, based, but um, they're doing quite well. well. The first two are doing quite well. So we'll see how the third one does. And nice. Yeah. All right. Speaking of little girls, so so you have your family. Yep. And you have a daughter. Yep. Right. And just a daughter. Um, I have a husband and a son, Indy, and my daughter, Magnolia. Oh, okay. Three. Uh, my son is three years old, and my daughter is five. Okay. So and now you went on a trip, doing yep. classes. Yes. Across the United States, uh -huh. right? And in a VW van. Yeah. Which is what everyone wants to do, <laughs> right? And uh, and you filmed this, or yeah. what happened? Well, okay, so I've done two tours. I call them my, my confessions tour. So um, I did one uh, from Vegas, San Francisco, all the way down to San Diego in four weeks, okay. hitting up salons. And my one that I just got back from literally two weeks ago um, was Arizona, Colorado, Nebraska, Iowa, 
Illinois to um, Indiana, and the bus wow. actually is in Indiana right now. So I basically went around to different salons that wanted to host me, that wanted my educational program. Okay. And I taught my classes and um, had a blast. Brought my. And how family, did you find these salons? Put on my Instagram. Just saying you were gonna do. I'm some actually looking for host salons in Cincinnati. Just throwing that out there. Okay. Nice. For my next tour. Um, but yeah, just put on my Instagram and. Then people would email my assistant, and then if it was a good fit, if um, they could hold up to like, I don't know, 25 people or so, okay. at least 25 people. And then people. you would sell a class there? Yeah. Or, okay. I, I uh, have all my educational classes like um, booked through my website. Okay. And then, yeah, I mean, it was a time of my life. So the first one, we got it documented. Um, and then the second one, I filmed everything with my GoPro. Nice. And it's sponsored by a couple of hair companies, and they give free goodie bags to all my attendees. And Very cool. I mean, really, it's a, a great road trip with my family. Yeah. Kicking ass, doing hair, and having a lot of fun. That's awesome. Very cool. So, and now you've started another venture that we'll kind of end on, but your daughter can do updos. Well, that was <laughs> so. totally on accident. I swear, like... Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with that. It was kind of like a joke. So um, I was trying to come up with a new, like, educational program for my classes. So I right. got my doll heads out, like I do, well, as we do, right, Matt? Right. But um, I was messing around, and my daughter, like, grabbed it and started, like, pinning it up, um, the hair up on this mannequin. And I was like, wait, can you do that again? And so I set her in, like, the living room or dining room, and recorded her doing an upstyle and she actually did it so yeah. i started me and my wife were on the couch watching i was like wow that's just like she's oh yeah she yeah, did good she's been watching but yeah. you know what's funny about that is yesterday i actually tried to like teach her something and she's like nope like she yeah. doesn't want to i don't well, know that's so as long as she's five. having fun yeah whatever yeah. but she might want to go into doing hair she i mean her video went viral and i started her a little instagram account <laughs> It's pretty fun. And that's what it's all about. Having fun. Yes. Living out what you want to do yeah. and creating your own path. Yep. So congrats. Do you want to talk about your upcoming stuff that you're thinking? Do you want to put it out in that much of the world? Or Ooh, I don't know. Or do you want to let people wonder what it is? Well, I mean, I can't say that I have a few things um, brewing. You know, yeah. I feel like... Um, I just want to say, like, I, I don't want people to, like, compare themselves with me. You know, being, doing everything that I'm doing, it, it's, it can be quite difficult. And my business model has changed from working inside the salon. So um, I'm opening up a studio that's going to have um, uh, Instagram wall, YouTube kind of thing where I'm going to actually mentor some uh, young stylists or anyone that wants to be mentored on, on how to uh, get kind of into that platform. Nice. And, um I got some other things up my sleeve, so we'll just leave it at Very that. cool. And you yeah. uh, you had a cla class. How did that go today with uh, American Salon? You were... Oh, it was awesome. Cool. Yeah, so I was... Uh, get, I, I guess it would be tomorrow, a guest panel. I have to do it tomorrow, so I'm really panel. just selfishly asking. Oh, yeah, this, yeah. Okay. So you sat on the panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it then, was easy. Gordon's so easy. You can, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was easy just talking about social media and really helping... Um, the generation that doesn't understand it or anyone that needs a little guidance or coaching because okay. I feel like it's our it is our generation and it's, it's where our industry is evolving and if we can help others with that right. you know I think that's key you know absolutely yeah so it's evolving and fast. how's uh, how's our Facebook live going all right so this is oh Jessica Ann Green wants to know what would be your best advice to a young stylist? We kind of touched on that a little bit at the beginning. So maybe like... Social media in wise? In general. Well, you know... Like if you had to start over again. Well, what I can say is that being in the industry for 16 years, I, you know, I was a young stylist once that was like, oh, why can't I take the elevator and not the stairs? And what I mean by that, you know, it's easy for us to take the elevator now with social media to success. Um, I'm so grateful for the experiences that I had as a young stylist. And I, I'm just going to say, I worked for Tony and Guy and I went through their training program for years and years and on their art team and whatnot. And that's really helped mold me and yeah. condition me to the stylist I am today. And I feel like there's so many hairstyles, young hairstyles that just want to get a following or want to get a clientele through social media. But 
but they need to take the educational steps or, yeah. or the foundation to teach a class or foundation to go far in the industry. And, and I would say pay your dues at the beginning and, and really it's going to help really mold you to a strong yeah. hairstylist. It's a lot harder to, um, to do the education part than it is to get the following. The following, as long as you work hard, you can get the following. Yeah, yeah. But you're going to have a much more successful career and following if you're going to have more to give yeah. if you take the time to learn. Absolutely. Like I, I worked for Paul Mitchell for 10 years and, and if I didn't do that, if I wasn't in 75 classes a year yep. in somebody's basement in the middle of Scranton, Pennsylvania, like I wouldn't have... I wouldn't know the questions that people wanted to have answered. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I wouldn't be able to create it. And I'm sure it's the same. You did the same thing. Oh, yeah. So. Well, I feel like it's helping the longevity of our career. You know? Right. Like, if I didn't know what the hell I was talking about on stage, you'd think people would want to come to my educational classes? Right. Probably not. Like, it's like a pop singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I've never wanted to be that one hit wonder. I've always <laughs> wanted to right. have my career last. And But I feel like you really need that good, solid foundation, whether it be Paul Mitchell, V. Out, whatever. I mean, there's so yeah. many wonderful programs out there, but, um, you know, have a little bit of uh, structure is, is really important. Very cool. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank, thank you, you for watching on Facebook Live. Woo! And uh, follow us. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you, Jenny, for sitting thank down. Thank you, Matt. Thank you to American Salon. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.